This box contains something that might be revolutionary for resin 3D printing. I'm talking about fully automated washing and curing. My name's Jim and this is The Edge of Tech. So like I said, this box contains something that could be a game changer for resin 3D printing. I'm talking a fully automatic wash and cure station that does everything for you. This actually comes from a company called iBOS, E-I-B-O-S. And I tell you what, we've seen other products on the channel that I've really, really liked. This is the first time that I've seen this product. It is not production. So this is a beta test unit. This is not a production unit. That's why the packaging is different and stuff like that. But I'm gonna get it unboxed. We're gonna put it together and test it with a resin 3D print and see how it is. So this is a first look at the iBoss Oceanus. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get this thing out of the box. Um, at first look, it looks like there is a bottom and a top. It does have a power cord in there. Now we've seen a couple things from iBoss, uh, mostly filament dryers, which have been very good products in my opinion. I've liked them and I still use them to this day. So let me try to get this packaging out here. So I've got the top part out. Kind of get this off. Oh, nice. So you see that iBoss logo on there and it appears that I have this thing upside down. So we'll flip it over. Like that. I'm gonna make sure there's nothing else in the box. There is a little manual. So we'll get that going. <laughs> so this is what it looks like so far. Let me get this plastic off. And what I see now is, I mean, a pretty nice unit here. Uh, I know this isn't production. I know things could change. I'm gonna ask them to send me a production unit after they got those running too, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, so the top looks like it has glass. It's very hard to see, but there's actually buttons in there. I'm sure it'll light up when we get it going. Um, there is a little manual here. So I'm gonna open this up. And I'm going to pop this open and it looks like there's a couple of water pipes. So that's interesting. There is um, a little Tupperware container, uh, like a lock and lock kind of thing. So that's also interesting. Uh, but the inside of the printer looks like it has a bunch of lights in here. It has a whole bunch of UV curing lights in here. It has a bottom with a little fan with a stirrer that we see in a lot of the resin printing um, containers, I guess the resin printing wash and cure stations. Uh, it looks like it has a fan unit up here. And from what I saw, this fan unit actually blows down on the print after it washes it and it dries it before it cures. So that's pretty cool. And on the back here, we have a couple of water uh, ports. Looks like maybe an inlet and an outlet. Um, and it's telling you to install them into the uh, a container of alcohol. So. It looks like at this point, you'd need a container to put your alcohol in. I did not have one of my resin cleaning Tupperwares or anything that came with a wash and cure because I haven't brought any of that stuff over here to the new studio yet. I've been doing the resin stuff over at the old place. So I found this here snack container. Uh, I took the label off so we could actually see what was happening inside of it. Uh, I washed it out really well and we're gonna use this to see what's happening. So. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the pipes on the back here. I'm really hoping that this little container is enough liquid. And I'm really hoping that it's sturdy enough to hold these pipes. So I did bring IPA over because when I opened this, I thought it was going to contain everything you needed. So as of now, this does not have a container for your IPA. Now in the picture in the manual, it shows using a gallon. So you could use a gallon of IPA if you wanted, like in a gallon jug. Get these out. We are going to screw them in. So I'll get both of these on. I'm gonna make sure they're tight. We don't want any leaks, right? Uh, we need some IPA. So these are gonna go in here like this. I did bring IPA because I, again, I thought everything was gonna be in this box. Surprise it wasn't, but that's okay. I might need much more IPA than this. We're just gonna dump the IPA in this container. Now I use 99% isopropyl alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, and uh, 
You can find that in the description below. I have a resin printing link that goes to Amazon. And a lot of the stuff I use is on Amazon there on that link, including the um, silicone mats and the isopropyl alcohol and a bunch of stuff. Have our IPA in the jug here. So now we can watch that. Um, these are our pump and return hoses. So I'm hoping I can just do this. And they, they're not exactly wanting to stay. So I'll have to find a good way to do it. For the video, we're gonna do this. First thing I'm gonna do is, is plug this bad boy in and let's see what happens. Okay, when I got it plugged in, there's a power button on the top, so I'm gonna press that power button. I'm gonna go water level low, so there looks like there's a low, medium, high. So we'll start with low and we'll see what happens. We'll go wash, dry, and cure is all on there. So for now, let's just hit the button and see what happens here. So, Oh, it shuts off when you open it. Okay. So right now it's it filling up this reservoir right now with the IPA. You can see it going down here. And that's pretty cool. So now what it did is it kicked into a wash mode and it's gonna do that for uh, four minutes it sounds like. If I open this, it stopped. I can see water in here. I'll show you that with some B-roll here while I'm talking. Um, but it's just yelling at me. So I'll shut this now. Essentially there's um, a fan or a, a blade in there that's spinning around really fast, just like the wash and cure stations usually would. And it's just going round and round and round currently. All right, I had to catch it real quick. It is now pushing the IPA back into our container. It got done cleaning. I was able to pop that lid open very quickly and see that it was spinning really good. I mean, there's a lot of agitation inside of there, which was great. So now it's spitting the IPA back into our container. You can see that the IPA is rising here. It's sucking it back in for some reason. I'm guessing it's because I opened the door um, while it was in the middle of its agitation. So we're gonna find out in a second here. So it's pumping it back in after the second wash because I interrupted it. Uh, I did do some research quick. It does 400 revolutions a minute. And now it's on the drying stage. So this is a three in one, washing, drying, and curing. And you can really hear that fan kick up. Let's see. So I can really hear that fan kick up. It's a pretty good size fan in there. So it's currently drying as you go and there are some times on here. So right now it looks like uh, it's set at like 12 minutes. Um, and so we're gonna let that fly. I think it can be changed, but you can't change it while it's going. And then as soon as the parts dried, it's gonna jump into the curing. And this has 96 UV lights all around the inside of this thing, kind of evenly spaced. And uh, it's supposed to be very good for curing because 96 UV lights all around the unit on the inside should be pretty good. So I cannot change the time after it's already started, um, which is okay. All right, so what I got is a test print off of the Hallett One Plus, I believe it's what it's called. And I'm working on testing that printer, so this is perfect timing. This one was hanging there for maybe like 24 hours. I hadn't taken it off yet. Uh, it's still pretty goopy. Now the instructions do say that you can pre-dip it if you want. And I know a lot of people do that before you drop them in your wash and cure stations um, because this is gonna get pretty goopy you know, with resin eventually. And they talk about that in the manual as well. But what I'm gonna do is not that. I'm just gonna drop it in there. We're gonna see what happens. So I'm gonna take this lid and I'm gonna open it up. I got resin on this hand, so I don't wanna touch anything. I'm gonna drop my model. Pretty dang goopy in there. You can't really see it on camera, but it's very shiny. Um, you know, I think I'm gonna go, I think I'm gonna go upside down on this one, like that. So this is actually sitting in there. It's upside down on there. You can see the LEDs all around inside of there. And there's 96 of them in there, that's what they say. So you see the part in there, you see the rack that it sits on, and underneath that rack is that, that fan. Uh, 400 revolutions a minute is what they say. There we go. So you see the lid right here, it has that big fan in there and that's used to dry off the parts. And again, if we look way down in there, you see the part is in there. We're gonna do it a wash and a cure and a dry and see how it goes. What I'm gonna do is hit our power button, just like that to turn it on. I'm gonna keep it on low. Um, I don't think I have enough 
Maybe if I put the rest in there. I'm gonna, you know what, let's go to medium and just see what happens. Uh, I'm gonna do our wash cycle. You can do four, eight, or 12 minutes, or you can turn it off. So let's just do, let's say four minutes. Let's see how four minutes goes. Dry cycle, you can do 12 minutes, 15 minutes, or 18 minutes. So I'm just gonna do 12 minutes because let's just see the lowest possible. The cure mode, you can do two, four, or six minutes. Um, let's go with two minutes and see what happens. And start, ooh, this is close. Uh-oh. That's it. It's still trying to pull now, and it's yelling at me that we don't have enough. So, I'm gonna stop it. I'm gonna start it again. We're gonna go back to low, which is fine. And then wash, which is four, and go. Now I know it has enough for the low cycle because we already filled it. So now that we know we didn't have enough, we're gonna start on low. We're gonna let this thing wash, dry, and cure it, and we'll be right back. Okay, they're all done, and it's kind of hard to see, but I wanted to show you the light up buttons here. When you first hit the button, it'll light up everything. Then you have kind of touch buttons here. This is low, medium, high, so, or off, so low, uh, and then you touch it and it goes medium to high. This is your wash time, so if you touch that, you can see there's four, eight, or 12. And then this is your, or off. This is your dry time, so you can go uh, 12, 15, or 18, or off. And this is your cure time, two, four, or six, or off. This just turns everything off. So it is done now. It went through the paces. We're gonna open this thing up and see what it looks like. So that's what it looks like inside of there. Um, theoretically, everything should be cured in here now. And we're gonna see how well it did. Now remember, I had to use the low volume of uh, IPA because I didn't have enough. But let's just see how we did here. So the first thing I notice is this has a whole bunch of little lattice holes in it. And I don't think it fully dried uh, after the IPA. So that's not awesome. So let's, let's do this. Let's throw it back in here. You can see the bottom is still wet there. Uh, I'm gonna close this up. This particular model probably didn't have enough IPA in it to clean it all. With all those little lattice holes in this one, it was kind of probably gonna be hard to dry that all out. I'm just gonna do a two minute cure, um, let it go and, and see if it cures the bottom if anything needed to be cured. Okay, so I ran and washed my hands and I just cured that for two more minutes and we can see what is going on here. I'm thinking I'm not curing this for long enough, and I was just doing it for two minutes. Also, I kind of want to wash it again, but uh, again, this is the first time I'm using this. This is the very first thing uh, I've ever done in here, so I probably should read the manual and kind of walk through it a little more. What I'm seeing right now is the very top here was not dried off, and you can see inside of there, the little lattice pieces there, it probably was not dried out enough in there before it cured. Um, so I'm gonna turn this on its side because it's just got IPA all over it right now. Maybe I'm not gonna turn it on its side because it's a ball and it doesn't want me to. <laughs> Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pull it out. I'm gonna do, uh, I don't know, two more minutes. Let's do four more minutes of cure. Um, I'm gonna pull that thing out and we're gonna just see it from there. Okay, I got it out and I just want to talk about what I see real quick. So this is a very tough model for most wash and cure stations, in my opinion, because of the lattice, because the holes are so small, you really have to be able to rinse them good, which this thing did. I mean, there is IPA still in those holes. And then you need to get it fully dried. And that's maybe where I went wrong. I chose the lowest setting on this, I think it's 12 minutes, and it did not get all of the IPA out from inside of all the little lattice pieces in here that you can see. So what you have now is IPA all up in there. It didn't fully dry um, because of that, and then we cured it. So on the bottom, it looked like it was wet, but it was actually cured because the IPA wasn't fully off of it, 
And you can see right now it's still kind of shiny, but the sides have that little like IPA inside of the lattice structure. So I should be able to see through all those lattice pieces and I can't. And most of that is due to the IPA that's still stuck in there. And that needs to be blown out and dried. So I need to dial in settings. This is the very first time I've used this. This is a very tough model to use it on. If it was just a little figurine or an action figure, none of that would have happened because it wouldn't have to get in there. But the cool thing is, this thing has a ton of potential and I can't wait to keep using it. So I did this video kind of in a live format. I didn't test anything before I filmed this video. I, I filmed it as I went and just saw what happened. Uh, this is kind of like how I do my live streams and we see what happens on the live stream. Do I like this thing? Yes, it is pretty nice. It could change. Again, this is a beta unit. Um, there's been a bunch of beta units and iBoss is working hard to dial this thing in. Something else we need to talk about is that it is launching on the dreaded Kickstarter. <laughs> so Kickstarter for people is you love it or you hate it. I mean, people are just so torn on Kickstarter and there's definitely a reason you should be because in the past, things have definitely failed including myself i've lost money on one of the projects i backed it never shipped it you know ran out of money and that kind of thing and that can happen so uh when this launches on kickstarter i would suggest check it out this is in no way a review video this is more of a first look let's see how it looks let's show you this really cool new tech i am super excited to keep using this thing i probably will do a follow-up video and i'm going to ask him for a production unit as well the cool thing about this is it has a lot of potential it has it can go up from here, right? We could put a mini in here and it's probably gonna do a really good job. What I'm gonna start doing next is uh, I'm gonna wash it and then dry it and then stop the machine. I'm not gonna do the cure process. I wanna see how it does in my further testing. Uh, I'm not gonna do that for this video because I don't have another printed model here to test that on. People will tell you don't back Kickstarter unless it's money you wanna throw away. 100% uh, agree, there is a risk. Kickstarter has no guarantee you're ever gonna get anything. You're just helping the company, in this case, iBoss, uh, move forward on a project. But that being said, give me one second. And poof, you might remember both of these. These are filament dry boxes by iBoss. Both of them I've featured on the channel in the past, and both of these projects have delivered from iBoss. So my experience with this company is that they have delivered what they said they were going to in the past, and these two are here. I mean, they're, they're units that I've seen, I've shown on the channel, and many people have backed them, and many people got them. So that's, you know, a really cool thing about this company. Now, as for the Oceanus, we'll see how it goes on the Kickstarter. I think it has a lot of potential, like I already said. This is kind of the set it and forget it of resin cleaning. You could take your part right off of the plate, you could uh, dip it a little pre-soak, that's what a lot of people do anyway, and then throw it in this thing, let it do the cleaning, let it do the drying. Hopefully it does better than what we saw here because this is a super you know, complicated part to dry anyway. In the future, I'll play with settings. I'm not gonna go with the bare minimum like I did in the beginning of this video. Uh, and we'll see how it goes. I will keep you guys posted, but this has been just a first look of the iBoss Oceanus. If you like it, if you wanna see more, there'll be a link in the description where you can find out more information. Check out their Kickstarter when that goes live as well. Again, it's Kickstarter, be careful. Uh, I can't promise they're gonna deliver this, nor, I, nor will I ever say that, but in the past, they've delivered like they said. This is a really cool product. I'm really hoping that in my testing it goes better. We're gonna find out. So in the comments, let me know what you think. This is a three-in-one uh, wash, dry, and cure station. Let me know if you think this would be helpful. Let me know if you thought this was a good kind of first look video and, and what you thought in general. I hope you guys learned something a little about the Oceanus today. And if you want to check out some dry box stuff from these guys, this thing is pretty awesome. Check out this video right here.